Hello my friends, happy Sunday. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are following up on a little bit of a topic that, I mean, it has been going around on the interwebs, let's be honest. And uh, we are talking about ins and outs for 2024, but we're not talking about the outs because I think that's kind of boring. So we are only talking about the ins for 2024 and specifically the ins for my personal style in 2024. Also, this is a follow-up on my prior video last week we are now making it all make sense so we're connecting those looks to my ends for 2024 guys I'm so excited about this let's dive right in cheers the first thing my friends is something that this little ensemble is embodying or I mean I guess the entire mood of this video right we are talking about muted tones or tonal looks we're not talking about not wearing color, but we are talking about wearing those more subtle tones of colors, I guess. This is something that I started to do quite a lot in 2023. This is something I will continue to do in 2024, simply because it's something that I feel gives a cohesive, kind of balanced look for me personally, right? Because if you look at me, I am not really a high contrast person, right? I have blonde hair, I have very fair skin, I have blue eyes, there's nothing that gives contrast, right? Now, if I had like dark brown hair, then the story might be a little bit different because I think if your complexion is high contrast, then wearing bright colors, the kind of more stand out -y shades of those colors, right? The saturation is high. I think that gives such a good look if you have like a high contrast complexion. Now for me that's clearly not the case, right? So I will stick in my comfort zone this year, which is muted tones in terms of colors. I mean, we're talking beige, we're talking brown, we're talking black even, even though that is kind of a high contrast tone for me personally, or color we should say for me personally. But black is one of those colors that I like to ground outfits with. We're talking about navy blues, we're talking about some greens, we're talking about some reds, specifically cherry red I am obsessed with in 2024. I think cherry red is one of those colors that a lot of people are obsessed with in 2024, let's be honest. But I am obs uh, obsessed, I am especially obsessed, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, the brain is not braining today. Muted looks, tonal looks, giving kind of low contrast, giving kind of balance in terms of what you see in the whole ensemble with my personal complexion, right? I think that's a good look. I think that's an in for 2024 for me personally because it is bringing out my personal beauty. It is bringing out, essentially, the outfit is not taking over my personal kind of look, you know, if that makes sense. So in the example, obviously, as you can see, the whole look is pretty low contrast, right? We have a beige turtleneck, we have a taupe blazer, we have a pair of blue jeans. We do have some cherry red in the accessories, but in general, the whole look is pretty toned down and muted, right? And dare I say cherry red is the muted version of red, right? So I feel like it kind of goes with this whole muted or tonal kind of vibe for 2024. For me personally, I think it's a good in for this year. The second in for this year is something that I guess the fashion girlies have been doing, which is everyone is wearing skirts and dresses. I think skirts and dresses, I mean, what most people are talking about is with black tights specifically. I've always been a black tight girly. I think black tights are just so chic. They streamline your leg. They make everything look more coherent versus a leg just being out in the wind, like out and about, like what is that leg doing here? Just the tights for me personally bring some coherence. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Maybe this is trauma that I need to heal. Maybe I should bring this to my therapist. Wear your skirts, Amanda. That is the key takeaway. Like I have so many skirts. I am obsessed with buying skirts and dresses, but I rarely wear them. So just wear your skirts. Like I said, I have plenty of skirts. I have too many skirts, dare I say. But the two skirts that are still within my comfort zone, for one, is my Black Tiger of Sweden skirt that you've seen on my channel quite a bit. And secondly, is my navy blue Gantt skirt that I bought this year. Even though I haven't worn it that much, I still think that is one of my best purchases this year, low-key. Because that skirt, 
like it fits me perfectly like i did not even have to tailor it it's made of wool it's a kind of swedish brand i guess if we want to classify gant as a swedish brand i mean essentially it's one of those 10 out of 10 skirts i need to wear it more i'm wearing it in this outfit essentially three blue items so the blazer the turtleneck and the skirt we're making this look a little bit more fun, sporty, and preppy with some red additions to the look. I think this type of look is, I mean, for one, so comfortable to wear. Like, I feel like this is not, like, making it more difficult for me to get dressed. I mean, sometimes if I wear a skirt and I have to, like, think about, like, how do I pair this skirt together with what I'm trying to give for today, right? Then it gets complicated. But with this type of look, where, I mean, I have three items that I know go together, then, I mean, just wear it. Amanda, just wear your skirts. So in for this year are skirts and dresses, the ones that I already have in my wardrobe. I'm not buying more because I have plenty. So skirts, wear your skirts, Amanda. Pair them with tights because that's apparently in. That's what the cool girlies do. And uh, why not buy into that whole hype for a little moment? And my third point, my friends, ties into that seamlessly, which is shop your wardrobe. Like, go to your wardrobe, see what you have in there. Do not buy something new just because you feel like you need some newness in your life. Like, that newness you can get from the garments that you have in your wardrobe, but you're not currently wearing, if that makes sense. I'm one of these people, like, I probably wear 20% of my wardrobe, 80% gets neglected, and I wear it once in a blue moon, where I, like, get a little spark of motivation or, like, inspiration, and I'm like, hmm, maybe I should wear that. But I want to change this habit. I want to shop my wardrobe consistently. I think shopping your wardrobe is such a good in for 2024. I think everyone needs to shop their wardrobe more, literally. But I know, like, I am a creature of habit. Like, I stick to my creature comforts so hard. Like, there is nothing that can pull me away from this blazer, essentially. I will also wear the things that, like, the 20% that I currently wear all the time. I will still wear that, but I will dip my little feet into the 80% of my wardrobe, where I essentially have so much high quality, like good garments that I'm not currently wearing. So, shopping your wardrobe is on trend for 2024. You heard it here first, people. <laughs> Excuse the outfit change. It got a little bit warm with the cashmere turtleneck over my shoulders, but this is cute as well, right? <laughs> Let's hope. So in the outfit that I'm showing you right now, I mean, I'm essentially wearing that Hugo Boss blazer that I bought this year. I bought it at the beginning of the year and then I literally forgot about it. Then later on in the year, when I got into my whole little like, hmm, what do I actually have in here? Let me open my wardrobe for once and not just wear whatever I wore in the prior days, you know? And I found that blazer and I'm like, this blazer is so chic. I understand why I bought it, but I do not understand why I'm not wearing it. So I've been styling it in a few different ways. This outfit that I'm showing you is my personal fave. I have been low-key obsessed with this outfit, which is why I'm showing it to you. So shop your own wardrobe. Maybe you will also find a cute little blazer that you've been neglecting for months. Go and have a little look-see, see what you find, keep me posted, and I wish you good luck. My fourth point might be a little bit contradictory to my third point because it is decluttering. And I mean, okay, shopping your wardrobe is one thing, but decluttering, aren't you like taking away style opportunities if you're decluttering? I would tend to say that's not the case because sometimes when you're shopping your wardrobe, you find these things, you're like, I have not worn this since I was 15. It's for one, not fitting me. It's two, not giving what has to be gave at this stage in my life. Now, when I say decluttering, it doesn't have to be like a hard decluttering. You can do like a soft decluttering, living the soft life, you know? Which means, in my world at least, that you take that thing out of your closet, you put it in a little box, you let it rest in the box for a while, you may go back to that box and you look it through and you're like, hmm, maybe I actually want to wear this now. Then you just take it back. Essentially, taking it out from your wardrobe for a while, it gives it some space. You have some time to think. You have some time to like reflect, 
do I want this? If you forget about it and you open that box and you're like, what is this? Why would I ever wear that? Then maybe do a hard declutter, like give it away, donate it, give it to a friend, whatever is your favorite way of decluttering, right? And honestly, something that I found is when I take stuff out of my wardrobe and I have less clutter, I have less of those items that like I never reach for, that helps me in kind of like being better at wearing the rest of the things in my wardrobe because it's not so crammed, it's not so full of items that I don't get like an overview, you know? Once in a while going through and like reshuffling things and like color coordinating or coordinating in terms of like type of garment or however you want to coordinate your wardrobe, I think doing that once in a while really helps with enabling that creativity that you actually need or that you actually want, right? To put together interesting and fun outfits. Now, the outfit that is embodying this whole decluttering concept is an outfit with three items that I've thought about decluttering. For one, it's the pink blazer. Two, it is those um, navy blue, almost black jeans and those, what are they? Gray ash boots. The pink blazer I bought a long, long time ago. I've had trouble styling it, to be completely honest, because it has like a black part of the lapel. And that black part of the lapel has essentially made me think that I can only pair black garments with it. And for me personally, like an all black look with that pink pop of the blazer, that is just too high contrast for me. And I feel like I don't really have a good outfit day when I wear that. I thought, I mean, even though there is a black lapel, like there is no one. The fashion police will not get me, even if I'm wearing something that's not black with that outfit, I promise. <laughs> so I was like, okay, scratch that concept, wear something else, put something white with it and see if that kind of brightens up the whole mood, which I honestly think it did. And I'm like, okay, how do I pull this ensemble together? I put that scarf that is in a similar color, that Hermes Click H bracelet that is also in a similar color and bam, I had like low key a sleigh look. I am obsessed with that look. I'm looking forward to wearing the look. So decluttering I think is also on trend for 2024 so that we can be more intentional with what we have in our wardrobe, which is also bringing me to my next point because when you're shopping your own wardrobe, I mean, yes, shopping your own wardrobe is great. I will, however, not ever be able to buy nothing new. I do enjoy products. I enjoy scrolling. I enjoy a good Vestior Collective browse, honestly, or whatever website is your fave. So something that I did last year, right, was having a low buy year in 2023. I will continue with having a low buy year in 2024. Now, I know I owe you a little low buy year learnings video, so that will be coming up on this channel shortly, I promise. A low buy year, I think, is so helpful. I mean, I made my low buy year low key easy. I made it very manageable because I basically had very fluffy rules. My dad was like, Were you on a low buy year? What was that? <laughs> He was like, you must have made that too easy for yourself, which I did, honestly, but that was my first low by year, so do not hate, please. A low by year I will continue to do. I'm not sure if I will make it any more difficult because essentially it's just the intention of the low by year that counts. I mean, buying essentially items that you intend on wearing or using or having for a long, long time, and not just buying here and there and everywhere and just going on one of those, like, I am just going into the city center and then you find something cute, you don't have it on your wish list, you just buy it and then you never wear it. Like, no, those are not the purchases we want in 2024. Being mindless in your spending, in your shopping, in your consumption of fashion is out. I know I said we were not talking about, but I think that is out. Fast fashion, impulse purchases, that is out. In is intentional shopping, building wish lists. I need to make an updated wish list video as well. We should make that happen very soon as well, because I have some good items that I am on the lookout for. But Working with a wish list, buying things only from your wish list, 
or things that you feel like this has been missing from my wardrobe. This is something that would enable my style to be better, more elevated, more chic, more timeless, more classic, more classy, whatever words that you're trying to embody in your personal style, right? For me personally, it's my luxurious equestrian cafe that I continue to have as my style narrative for 2024 because I think that worked so well for me, honestly, in 2023. Being intentional in general, like not only in terms of shopping and style and your wardrobe, but just in general, having a more intentional mentality towards your life not to be too deep, but I think that's such an in for 2024. Being intentional is trendy. Something that I intentionally invested in for my wardrobe last year was this FTC cashmere sweater that I wore across my shoulders in the beginning of this video. This is one of my safety blanket outfits. Like I said, I am a creature of habit. I have my creature comforts. This is one of my creature comforts. This blazer that my grandma wore, this turtleneck is a Uniqlo turtleneck. We know I live in Uniqlo turtlenecks and merino wool. I think they are such good value for money, honestly, and they're so high quality. I am also wearing my Stuart Weitzman 50-50 boots. I'm also wearing my Levi's jeans that I think I bought like in 2012 in New York. <laughs> this outfit has been with me for forever apart from the little FTC cashmere sweater that I bought this year and that I'm so happy that I bought. And I mean, essentially, I had that kind of a turtleneck on my wish list. I wanted something in either off-white or a light beige. I wanted something a little bit oversized. I wanted something in 100% cashmere. I wanted something that's so squishy, so soft, so warm, so delicious, literally. And I found it in that cashmere sweater. So I am clearly obsessed. I bought it at the absolute top of 2024, I think like in January or February. And I've been wearing it legit, I think every month this year. Like I didn't even put it away for summer because I was like, on those chilly summer nights, I can wear this either over my shoulders or like as a layer. Like if I get a little bit chilly, this is such a cute little turtleneck forever and ever. For every week, every occasion, this is the turtleneck I wanna wear. <laughs> So that is the kind of mindset we want to have going into 2024, right? Buying those high quality items that you want to wear time and time again, you want to have them in your wardrobe for forever. You think they will enable you to have better style or you think they are missing from one of those style concepts that you're trying to embody, right, for 2024. This was one of the things that, like I said, I wanted. I got it, I am so happy that I got it and I've been wearing it so much, literally. The cost per wear, like the girl math girlies are probably saying that, I mean, this is paying me at this point. Like I've worn it that much, honestly. Those were the ends for 2024 that I am so excited to either lean into more or just continue with in this year. I was gonna say this upcoming year, but we're already in 2024, how exciting. So we're talking about muted colors. We're talking about wearing your skirt, Amanda. We're talking about shopping your wardrobe. We're talking about decluttering and we're talking about intentional shopping. What are your ends for 2024? I would love to know. Can you please leave me a comment and let me know what are your ends? I am so excited to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to know more in detail about those outfits that I showed you throughout this video, I have a video where I'm actually showing you the outfits and talking through where the things are from, right? So I will link that, I guess, at the end, the end screen of this video. Also upcoming on my channel, like I promised you in this video, right? We need to talk about my low buy learnings from 2023. So do keep your little eyes peeled for that. Thank you so much for spending this time and space with me today. If you enjoy this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this chat with me, consider subscribing and joining the Seedler family. Thank you so much and stay safe. Take care and I will see you soon. Bye. Woo! Bye.